Welcome back to Button Down Gaming. My name is Jay, and I am playing with myself. Wow. All right, so we <laughs> left off talking to that weird dude who controls all knowledge. What is this? Yes. Towering above you is an enormous archway of metal and synth. Energy pulses through the structure, spilling from thin, transparent panels and subtle shades of gold and cyan. Examine it more closely. It appears to be dormant, but very much alive. The archway emits a low and constant hum, just at the edge of your hearing. Across the top, illuminated words are inscribed. The House of Empty Time. Heavy, rope-like cables connect the archway to an ancient device nearby. Try to activate it. You scan the parts of the arch that are accessible from the ground, but you don't see anything that resembles a control device. Finally, you give up your search. If the arch can be activated at all, the method is unclear. Alright, I'll leave it alone. Go. Eventually, I'll find some place that I can go. Oh, it's here. Right. Let's just walk right in. Um... Oh, you look like you might know something, men of Tanliang. The priest is tall, thin, and dressed only in black. Narrow slashes of oil decorate his unlined skin like letters in an unknown tongue. His eyes are harried, but alive with intelligent humor. They land on you with a tiny flicker of recognition. I recognize you, he says. It's been ten years. I don't think we ever spoke. You were the one visiting Sally Mary all the time, right? Working on some sort of organic machine technology? That's right. Huh. Well, welcome back, Min says. What brings you to the Order of Truth? Can you tell me about your work? Okay, so we're at the Order of Truth, which is good. Heh. <laughs> He says, shaking his head. That's a big question, even on the best days. I specialize in mechanical Numenera, intelligent or not. But I haven't had much time for research since I started managing our branch of the Order. Um, ask you some questions. I would be incredibly grateful if you did, he says. Every other conversation I have revolves around how I'm ruining the Order, or not doing enough to save the Order. He rubs his forehead with the back of his calloused hand. Please, ask me about wires and blinking lights. Seems like a dick move, but okay. Uh, I'm trying to repair a device known as a resonance chamber. You're what? Min gasps. I thought that thing was a myth, and you're trying to repair it? Where is it? I'd rather not say. Ah, he says, his mouth twisting. Probably wise. Anyway, do you have any piece of the machine with you? I have a shard of it. Take a look. Oh, 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 it's tripping out. It's tripping out. Oh no, I think the game's gonna crash. Oh, whew. Hmm, he handles the shard with care. Organic and crystalline. It was grown into the appropriate shape for the machine. This is definitely what Salamary was working on all those years ago, with her partner. He looks at you, his eyebrow raised, but does not say more. Reluctantly, he hands it back to you. In all honesty, I focus more on traditionally powered machines. Salamary has some experience with organic machine construction. You might ask her about it. Um, alright. Is Salamary... Oh, Salamary is in here. Cool. You recognize one of the parties in this one-sided argument, Koro, the star seeker you met in the reef. He studies his boots, silent and miserable. <gasps> oh my god, they are from the Order of Truth. Okay. The other is a tall woman in finely cut robes regarding the man with arch disdain. When I told you to retrieve the falling star, I wonder if you heard return to me with empty hands and excuses. She sighs. I no longer need your services, Koro. Collect your things and go. What? No, Salamary. I, I searched the reef for hours. Whatever fell was long gone by the time we got there. 
and that is why you are unsuited for this work, she massages her eyes. Honestly, I don't know what I expected. I saw promise in you, but also the flaws, and I ignored them. She spots you out of the corner of her eye and turns to you, framing a sharp rebuke at your intrusion. Her anger turns to stark amazement when she sees your face. Adan! I haven't seen you in ten years. Ten years. I cannot begin to imagine what your excuse might be. Um, if you want an apology from me, you'll be waiting a long time. She shakes her head. Well, she says, at least my memory of your temperament is accurate. Despite the name, you never change, do you? Silver Tide. I gotta figure out what these tides mean. You left me in the middle of the night without a word of thanks, Salamary continues, after I introduced you to the Order of Truth, connected you to my contacts at the Oasis, helped you with your research. She, shuttle, she settles her hands on her hips, a lone finger tapping her impatience. What I'm saying is that I have a problem, Adan, and you're going to help me with it. You owe me that much. I owe you nothing, Salamary. You'll be lucky if I even remember you in a hundred years' time. Okay, so Silver must be evil, I guess. She barks a laugh in your face. Have it your way, she says. Miss out on the expedition of several lifetimes for the sake of your pride. She turns away from you. Don't let me keep you, Adon. You were leaving. Fine. Well, she says, raising an eyebrow. Look who's back. I half expected you to be gone for another decade. What have you been doing while I was away? Much of the same, she says casually, advancing my research, working on one book or another, handling tasks for the city when they arrive. The time has flown past, frankly. All right, I'm going to say it. Ah, yes, your little device, she says, glancing away. I'm afraid I never understood how it worked. Perhaps one of the other priests will. A hint of a vindictive smile graces her lips. What was your advice about the residence chamber again? Hmm, best to ask everyone in the Order of Truth, I should think. Fine. We'll start with you, Koro. Snurf. Snurf. Snurf, snurf. Slouched before you is a figure clad in a dusty, unremarkable robe. Loose folds of rough cloth shift to reveal a vaguely humanoid form with elongated facial features and two elaborate biomechanical arms. You can't help but notice the size, the shape, and even the number of its digits changing as it tinkers with a bizarre-looking device on the table. It glances up at you. Its eyes are the size of your palms. You realize it is a visitant, a being from another world. Greetings, fellow sentient, it says, nodding with a studied respect. I will be with you in a moment. Its mechanical fingers contract and dance independently over the surface of the device before it, adjusting and tightening. There, I am Snurf, guest of the Order of Truth. What brings you to my workspace? Uh, those arms of yours are interesting. How do they work? I am not quite sure, it says, raising them for your inspection. Extra digits whirl out of the mechanical palms in a somewhat nauseating wave and disappear just as quickly. They seem to be as sentient as either of us, but obedient so long as I keep them busy. Otherwise, they scramble about while I rest, touching things, picking locks, strangling the odd rodent, the visitant sighs. I force them to take up knitting. Tell me about yourself. Uh, I came from the bloom. The bloom. To be absolutely honest, I was exiled for inadvertent sacrilege and perversion. I would imagine that you are curious about my people's reproductive processes at this point, it adds placidly. I would happily describe them. The more detail, the better. Certainly, it says beaming, no details shall be spared. What? <laughs> Why did that change the tides? It is rather a complicated topic, however, so let me know when you're ready to speak at length. Um... I am not ready to speak at length, so I think we'll save that for the next episode. Um, hopefully we'll maybe even find out how to work these things, uh, the the tomb or whatever, the sarcophagus. We'll see. Anyway, um, so come on back next time and watch me play with myself.